I would start off this with salam alaikum, but uh, this is not a peaceful message, and salam means peace. This also was a message uh, of an endorsement of war, so to speak. It is a war that's already going on, but we Africans don't understand that it's a war because it's a cold war. It's pretty much a war between the Western European white man and his cave bitch and really everybody else. Hell, even, to a certain extent, even Eastern Europeans. But the Eastern European can blend in, as we've seen. And the Eastern European can uh, begin, uh, the Eastern European can become, uh, over time, indistinct. And one generation can become indistinct from the Western European cave cracker and his cave bitch. So this being said, um, I'm sitting up here and I'm saying F these white conservatives for a very valid reason. Now why would a black man who is uh, morally conservative at the very least sit up here and say F these white conservatives? And uh, it's easy to understand, but I haven't heard anybody sit up and articulate it yet. So I've decided I'll take that on myself. At the end of the day, if you are a black conservative, that doesn't mean that you are against uh, white folks, especially, certainly, just because they're white. If you are a white conservative, you have a problem with non-whites. And while you say, well, it's not really about color, it's about culture, the fact is, if you're a white conservative, your culture is a piece of shit. Your culture deserves to be annihilated. You deserve a holocaust, to be honest with you, because you brought them on other people. And even the way you recognize my use of the term holocaust is wrong because of your white conservative culture. You think Bolsonaro's great for Brazil? I'm talking about you, Sandman. Bolsonaro is only great for Brazil um, if you're a wealthy white person. Now, if you are, I mean, if you're white, it's probably okay. If you're an urban white person, it's probably okay. Um, but my goodness, man, be a, a, a farmer, a gaucho of really any race dependent upon the rainforest. And he might be good for you um, if you're not really, if you're a gaucho, but you don't depend on anything in the rainforest. But then he's really bad for you, of course, if you have come to uh, if you have come to terms and you've learned how to progress or to profit uh, while not tearing down the entire rainforest. Well, what if you are an original Brazilian or if you are an African Brazilian who was brought there against his will? How is he good for you then? I don't really have to ask them. They already know the answer. But I got to sit up and, and tell some black conservatives on occasion, if you're going to talk about um, black conservatism, uh, then understand that the average black person is going to see it without the nuances. And that is, in fact, their fault. But also, it is not completely their fault in that the nuances are not, uh, uh, are not usually comp comprised of information readily available to all of us. The other thing, too, to understand is that um, that the white conservative may come up with some morally sound uh, uh, policies and beliefs, but we have to realize that morality is never the reason for which they believe in them. It's like when Gavin McGinnis gets up and says that men should go back to chasing women again. I'm like, Gavin, why don't you fuck the shuck up? We've been doing that for millennia. Now it's failing. We did that. Um, what happened now? They don't want everybody chasing them. They have always been upset about who chases them. The men that chase them are usually the men they don't want. End of story. They chase the men they want. They've been doing it from time immemorial. We just didn't realize that because they're sneaky. And now you got the nerve to go back and say that husbands should be chasing their wives up the stairs. If her ass is running, she don't want you. That's what women's rights mean. See, white conservatives will F you up because they will sit up here and tell you to ignore certain realities, realities that their cave ass has created. But then when these realities start to affect them all of a sudden, then they want to take on these issues. 
I mean, let's look at it for what it was. There should have been a black manosphere long before there was a white manosphere, and there probably was a black manosphere, actually. Maybe there was one. But the fact is that there was never going to be even a white discussion about this until it affected them. Didn't matter what they did to us before. Why is that? Because you got to realize that that white conservative has still failed to see you as being just as human as he is. He hasn't fully understood it. He still hasn't gotten the message. It doesn't matter if it's Bolsonaro, a supporter of Bolsonaro, a Trump supporter, a Sandman. If you are a black man, you may support a particular thing that Trump's doing, or you may just be wedded, ready to wait for the results of it. But if you are a black man and you are supporting Trump, you might as well support Clinton. Then you know you're just the same as the ones who supported Clinton back in the 90s because he played the saxophone. Trump literally got up and said, what do you have to lose? Support me. That, that's it. What do you have to lose? Man, this father mucker took it. You need to understand how his granddad got wealthy. First off, that's the first thing a lot of you should know. How did Trump's grandfather make the money that he made? Typical white stuff. Fraud. Running away, escapism, all that stuff. Everything that Trump derides now at this point. You see, when you when you defraud somebody else and you make your money and you get away with it, Trump's look, Trump looks at you like you're smart and you should be respected. You defraud somebody and you get caught doing it, especially if you got melanin, then damn it, you're a piece of, piece of crap, scum of the earth. Trump is a simpleton. He's got the intellect of an eighth grader and he was voted into office because he is a damn racist. And you don't understand a lot of black and white conservatives, a lot of white conservatives don't want to admit and a lot of black conservatives fail to understand white conservatism is a high level of a cold war against non-whites, especially if you're black. People fail to get this all the time. So because white folks are willing, to, especially the white conservatives are now willing to spout some red pill stuff that we've had to deal with for generations and have always known. Now, many of us are starting to say we're starting to identify ourselves as conservatives. This is where I draw the line, because even though morally speaking, we do need some conservatism. We must understand that when it comes to these white folks, you will, you don't say stuff to them that they want to hear. They want to hear black folks talk about holding ourselves to accountability. No, 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 no. Blame their asses every time. You blame yourself in private. You don't blame yourself in front of your enemy that had everything to do with, with what's wrong with you. All that does is send a message to them, especially to these cave crackers, that, hey, look, I'm off the hook for this. It's not really my fault. It's this nigger's fault that I was able to do it. You give them this sort of mindset. And if you listen closely, that's exactly how they feel. That's exactly what some of these white nationalists and white conservatives are beginning to say. Well, so what if we came and took the Americas from the Indians? People always take land away from each other. Well, if people always take land away from each other, then why the hell is it wrong when all these uh, darkies move into Europe? They're the same ones complaining about it. They complain about darkies moving into, of all places, the U.S. and Australia. Places that weren't even white to begin with. The same ones that have a problem with immigration have a problem with us telling them you fit the guck out of the Americas and you get out of Australia. Take your pink ass back to Europe and walk back in this door nicely and ask for permission. They have an issue with that. Double standards abound when you're talking to white folks, liberals and conservatives. Somehow you ignorant ass niggas fail to realize you can sit up and say that you are morally conservative because you are conservative you could uh, use that term the literal meaning of a conservative would be that to a certain extent but the better way to see the thing that has to be done is that you you have to start saying uh, that, that you're somehow different just like the Muslim and the Jew and the Christian are spiritually related or revelationally related they still have distinctions and you have to pick one you can't pick two of them let alone all three. You got to pick one. And if you can't pick one, you're neither. Because you can't combine the two into one. They're related. They're very similar. Like the fraternities that we have. And the sororities. You got to pick one. They can have similarities and they can have differences. But you got to pick one. You can't sit up and say, I'm going to pick two or combine two because they're already similar. You're going to have to come up with another one.
when it comes to religion, you got to be careful about starting another religion because they're going to be people that do, do you in. So it's the same thing. When you're dealing with these religions, a Muslim is required to be distinct from Jews and Christian. A Muslim is required to be recognizable unless, of course, he's in the act of spying and intelligence gathering. And these are acts of war. And I'm not even engaging in that much, although I realize that we are a religious community at war. It's just that the, 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 the mulatto Muslims don't realize that. The Arabs, the Afghans, the Pakistanis, you know, them semi-Negroes. The ones that don't know they black and we got what they call good hair. I mean, they got what we call good hair. Yeah, them, they don't understand it, but it's an act of, we're in a relationship of war. And it's with these damn white conservatives. So when you're sitting up here talking about you a conservative and you a black conservative, it would be better if we came up with a different term, even though conservative is the literal meaning. It would be better if we came up with a different term and had something to distinguish us from them cave crackers. Because you don't, you got to understand they are not your friends. And when they say that it's not about color, it's about culture, them father muckers are lying, it's about both. It goes back to culture. I mean, it goes back to color at some point, always with them. It's embedded in them. The racism is baked in the cake. When you look at those Magoober skits on Saturday Night Live, look at the one where he's, uh, uh, where Magoober is dealing with uh, Daryl or Darrell. He can't even say Daryl. He keeps saying Darrell. Can you hand me that pen? Which one? That uh, uh, that that other pen? Uh, well, which one? Uh, the black or the African American pen? Or when he had? Look at that skit. You saw it before, many of you. If you didn't check it out, Magoober, Charles Barkley, type that in. You'll see it. That skit is a hilarious way to speak to a truth, and that truth is that white supremacy is baked into the cake with that Western European white man. Even Eastern Europeans are divided over how to deal with them. That Western European white man is a devil. It's not because he's white. It's because he made devilish decisions. And then, but, but just like uh, a devil, he gets up and he starts talking about how they're not accountable and they're not responsible for what they did to the original, in, uh, the original Americans in the Americas. Why? Because they could do it. We couldn't help ourselves. Ask them if these so-called conquistadores were as clean as the Indians they were killing. No, they were not. Everywhere that these Europeans went, they stank. So if you're going to be a so-called black conservative, it's okay to have that kind of platform as long as it doesn't agree with white folks too much. But in order to make sure that this is understood, we need to come up with a different term, a different identification. That's why we came up with Ibmore. Instead of just saying black MGTOW, we came up with it more, something different. Instead of being just a MGTOW that happens to be black, now you are an Ibmore. Instead of, uh, that's why we got CISPM, save yourselves black men. We're dealing with our own issues. We're dealing with some of the same issues too. But we ain't them and they ain't us. And it is not about just culture. It's about culture when we're dealing with each other. It's about color and culture when we're dealing with them because the colors are equal, but their culture is the real inferior culture. They're more hypocritical than Pookie and Ray Ray or Bebop and Rocksteady would ever be. See, Bebop and Rocksteady, you know what I'm talking I mean the figurative Bebop and Rocksteady. The man of tomorrow is also referring to by those names. You also call him Pookie and Ray Ray. Them niggas. One thing about them is that a lot of the hypocrisy that you find in, in uh, you find in white conservatives is not among them. Oh no, they they bold with it. They are in your face. I'm Pookie. I'm Ray Ray. I'm acting a damn fool. What are you gonna do about it, nigga? That's how they act. That's what they say. They open with it. The white conservative comes along and says, "Oh, it's not about color. It's about culture. If you niggas would just pull yourselves up by your bootstraps." And I know that because they're not just over there, they're over here, where I am. When one of these sand crackers gets to calling us slaves, even though he doesn't think it's a bad term, it's just a bad habit they got used to using. And they say it with no hatred, they really do. But then I get on them about it and I say, call your father up, call him a slave. Call him on the phone right now and call him a slave. And don't say slave of God, because that's not what you meant when you said it the first time. You meant nigger. What happens? Some white boy here, whether it's so-called white hair, or if it's an actual Caucasian here, some like them, will sit up here and tell me 
that I'm overreacting. But then if I start to insult that person, or if I start insulting white people, they're going to check me on it. What does that tell you? That's not a conservative. That's an effing hypocrite. That's what the white conservative movement is. It's okay as long as white folks do it. It's not okay when somebody else does it. So it's actually not really about the culture. It's about the color of those practicing the culture, even if the culture is the same. Because they're devils and you're not. So be different from them. I hope this has been a benefit. Awesome.